I'm Brian Miller. I'm a controller for the Milligator plant here in Conyers, Georgia. I'm Sean Kinney. I'm the sales manager of the Conyers plant. I'm Jerry Helton. I'm the training and development manager. I'm Chris Browning. I'm the lane manufacturing manager and basement assistant controller. So all analyst. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. So, Jeff, you, you've got a group of people that you can get interactive with. You can ask them questions. And uh, if you do ask them questions, I'll take them off mute. They can reply. And again, Brian, I'll be looking for you. If you're waving, I'll take you off mute so you guys can ask a question. So we'll make it a little interactive that way. I think it'll work out really good. Uh, Jeff, go ahead, and we can get started uh, right now, if you like. If you like. Great. I'll be going through chapter two of the book. I started as a foundation to teach what I call the core skill of a lean leader, which is sometimes called problem solving, sometimes it's called leading contingent improvement, uh, sometimes we use A3 and we talk about A3 thinking. What I'd like to do is to cover kind of a, the fundamentals of what we mean by all these words. And I'd also I'll start with uh, talking about another webinar that will be coming up in a few weeks. Uh, my colleague Mike Ballet writes in a different way than I do. He writes business novels. In fact, he's a closet novelist who's written novels who aren't, that aren't very successful, but his lean novels are. Some of you know him from The Gold Mine. His latest book, which was actually built on my model in my books about lean leadership is called Lead with Respect and in that book you'll be introduced to an IT department and a CEO and uh, and the struggles she goes through with a coach to uh, first of all accept that she needs to learn something at her uh, age and position and then second going through the coaching process from someone who turns out to be a very experienced coach they actually get to kind of live uh, with the characters through the process of transforming to become a lean leader and you get to see what a good coach looks like and the underlying theme is how do you lead with respect so I so there'll be four sessions by Michael uh, I think you'll enjoy it okay the model for improvement in Toyota's case or what they call problem solving is to always start with your purpose be very clear on the purpose and you're constantly being drilled by the sensei by the mentor what is the purpose of this activity what are you trying to accomplish over and over and over again and you you always should have two purposes one for the business and one for humanity for people from an organizational point of view the business purpose could be cost quality delivery from an organizational point of view the people purpose could be serving customers serving society uh, from the point of view of your process that you're trying to improve internally uh, you might have a business purpose of reducing inventory uh, and you might have a people purpose purpose of developing people to be able to see and eliminate waste so in every case you're always thinking about what are we trying to accomplish to improve people to improve society to improve the people who work for us to improve our business partners and then you define the ideal state. What would it look like if we were in heaven, if it was nirvana? And that's not necessarily a goal, because it's impossible, because we're not in heaven, but rather it's something we're striving for and gives us a sense of direction. We know we're moving in the right direction when we're headed in the direction of the ideal state. We have to set a target of some sort that sometimes is called a, a challenge, or a target or an objective or a goal sometimes it's set through the Hoshin Conry system but it gives you a clear target that says here's my where I'm trying to get to right now with this improvement process that's in the direction of the ideal state and this can be defined both as a result and a condition so the result might be lower cost or high qu higher quality or on time delivery and the condition might be that we have achieved a leveled schedule, that we're building a leveled volume and mix every day. Uh, so the condition actually 
if you achieve it, should lead to the result you want. Next. And then you need to ground yourself, and this is real important in Toyota, uh, sometimes when we set a strategy, we then say, go off and do it. Uh, but in Toyota's case, they say, let's study the current condition. In fact, you would be studying the current condition anyway, they call it grasp the situation, before you would set your, your target. And the current state is, where am I starting? You do that by going to the Gemba, by going and seeing, by looking at the data, and getting a very deep picture of where we are. And that gap then between where I am and where I want to be becomes the challenge. And then the way we achieve the challenge is step by step. We, the challenge is something beyond what we've ever done before, what we're doing now in our operation. And we don't know how to get there, so we need to find our way through exploration. And the way we do that is by setting intermediate targets, again results, and also target conditions. And we then can start to smooth out that process of improvement. Instead of trying to take one big jump and hit a home run, we're going to go for base hits. And we're going to define one base hit at a time. Get on base. And then when we, we take a swing, we're going to use the plan to check act cycle. And we're going to say, what happened? It, I hit a foul ball. I missed the ball. What happened? What did I learn? So how can I correct the next swing so it's accurate? And there, that's the learning process of taking small steps through PDCA, which some people confuse as being uh, a, a trade of bias for only wanting to make small incremental improvements. But in reality, they want to hit home runs. They want to, get, they want to score runs, and they want to hit some home runs sometimes, but most often they believe to do something like uh, come up with a hydrogen-powered vehicle that will change uh, the way we think about transportation. Their vision is that, that hydrogen vehicles will replace gas and will be as ubiquitous as gas. They see that 20 to 30 years out. But they need to do something, so they put out a car that might sell 2,000 copies. And then they study that and they learn from it. So they're PDCAing by putting a, a new, very technologically advanced car out there which can revolutionize the world. So it doesn't have to be small. Uh, the creative tension between the target and the ideal state, as well as the target and the current state, is what drives innovation. I remember when Steve Jobs uh, set up a Skunk Works to develop the first Macintosh computer, and there were really lofty goals, and there was little tiny amounts of memory that you had to cram all the read-only memory graphics into, and that target led to this team of people doing amazing things that they never thought were possible. Anything great in the world has happened because of some creative tension between a challenge and where we are. And then starting to work our way toward that challenge and having some failures but then having enough wins that it motivates you to continue.